Panago Pizza presents S D P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go, guys! After weeks of waiting, weeks of speculation, we finally have. One thing that the NHL and NHLPA agreed to, yay! Yeah, agreed which is they agreed to more something. speculation. Agreed to more speculation. <laughs> well, here's the deal. They knocked one thing off their list. So you could say they're 10% of the way there. We have. 10% of the bridge to hockey back in Bithia. We have the NHLPA and NHL agreeing on a 24-team playoff format. So according to Chris Johnson from Sportsnet, I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, the players' reps for all 31 teams agreed to, except two didn't, uh, a 24-team return-to-play format that will see the top four seeds in each conference given buys directly into the playoffs, while the other 16 enter a best-of-five round to determine their opponents. Meaning, technically speaking on NHL terms, you don't make it past that first round, they don't count it as the playoffs. Very interesting. Which is fair. I am for it. Yeah. Okay. I am so, for it. Because you two are loser purists. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is basically a. Uh, no, we'll get to it in a second. Sure. No, okay. Just, no, just go over there and be a loser purist for now. Let me just no, explain just, this. I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'm I'll kidding. sit in my I'm room kidding. of I'm toys kidding. and be I'm cool. Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. So here are the things they have yet to agree on. And that's why I just want to round this one up quickly. First mm-hmm. one. If a bracketed playoff format would be used as is the nhl's preference instead of seeding so the players want it to be seeding if you're boston if you're if you're one of the top teams in the nhl you don't want it to be a bracketed playoff because especially if you're boston you got a really really good division you want to play the worst possible team you want the 70 odd games that you played to be worth something Mm -hmm. the nhl is like no we want to do the dumb thing that everybody hates and what does the nhl usually get its way So we'll see what happens with that, but that's yet to be agreed on. This will also help determine what initial round robin games will be played between the top four seeds. Now, I have to talk about this because I actually had to text Chris Johnson this morning to see what he meant. There uh, had been, it had been thought uh, that they would use some of the downtime to allow some jockeying between positions, precise mechanics need to be hashed out. So that means, okay, so if you are in the top four, our thought was you get a buy into the playoffs. You don't play until the playoffs start. What the NHL is suggesting, and I'm going to read directly from this text message. Sorry, Chris. I hope, uh, hope you don't mind. Is, and he loves this format, by the way. Um, I think we love any format right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, they get a buy into the next round, but the NHL wants to use the results of those games to help determine their seeding. Meaning, if you are, if you are one, two, three, and four in the NHL right now, mm-hmm. you have not earned that position. You will earn that in a round robin play while the other rounds are going on. I like that. Do wow. You? And I think the teams would like that too because it gets them kind of moving and sharp. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you don't want those top, te- top teams to come into the playoffs and be like, hey, this team just played for the first time in three months and we didn't. So you get them, you get them started, you get their fresh legs, and then they mm-hmm. get to play in. That's I like awesome. that they play. Yeah. Right. I like that they – I Bruins fans have – there's no way they don't hate this. They must oh, they hate, hate this. Tampa, this is the reason Tampa voted against it. This was the specific reason Tampa voted against this format. Well, and I'm surprised Boston didn't because Boston was eight points up on Tampa, Mm -hmm. up on second in the Eastern Conference. So Philly is in this this play-in too. Boston is crazy. Philly's had a great year. Yeah. Philly, oh, I know. Unreal. And they were nine and one. They were the hottest team in the National Hockey League before this all shut down. So, Boston is in a play-in with a team they are eight points up on, 10 points up on, and 11 points up on. But they might not be first seed. So, yeah, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> this, they, like, Philadelphia was the hottest team in the league. They were 9-1 and one heading into it. Boston was 7-3. and three. Philadelphia was not going to make up 11 points they on the have. Boston Brewers. There was no situation. No. It wasn't going to happen. No. It was not going to happen. I'm they could have lost 12 straight. for the know. Bruins right now. Mm-hmm. I'm fighting for the Bruins. They should be one no matter what. But they got to do something. They got to do something just because they were dominant. Like, I look at the West, and who are our teams? We got St. Louis, Colorado, Vegas, and Dallas. Even St. Louis, they were 12 points up on the Stars. 
Mm -hmm. And they're in the same position. Well, look at this. Are you joking? Think, I, think know, about I this. don't hate it because it's okay. Boston is clearly the number one seed. So we're giving them the number one seed in the top seeds bracket. You know? We're not. They have to earn it. No, no. In, in oh. their little thing, they're the first yeah. seed in that little thing. So they get a home ice advantage so, or so something. You get, you get home <laughs> ice advantage in a place that's not your home no, and it doesn't really matter at all. But still, you get, For me, you get last change. That's something. You get the the far for a couple end, of games, the far end of the bench, yeah. like that's fun. So whatever. <laughs> Just use right that there is something, but what is proposed is so close to being really cool and really okay, and they're just missing it by just a little. For example, so I'm I'm looking at this on Sportsnet.ca. Pittsburgh versus Montreal, winner plays the four seed. Carolina versus the Rangers, winner plays the three seed. Islanders versus the Panthers, winner plays two seed. Toronto versus Columbus, winner plays the one seed. Who is playing who? I have no problem with. Toronto should probably be playing Columbus, Islanders, Florida, blah, 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 blah. Let's say, coming out of the play-in, the teams that make it are Toronto, Florida, the Rangers, and Montreal. Toronto is 8th, Florida's 10th, Rangers are 11th, uh, Montreal's 12th. What are the Leafs doing playing the number one seed, regardless of who it is? Let's say it's not Boston which would be even funnier because it's them getting jobbed out of their spot too. What are the Leafs doing as the top seed out of the play-in teams playing the top seed? Why? Why? Why can't you reseed that? Why not? We've, you can do whatever you want. You literally decide it, talk about it, and there it is on paper. You can do whatever you want. Why would you decide on this? Why would you decide on the winner of Toronto Columbus arbitrarily playing the top seed? Let's say it's Columbus. Forget Toronto. Let's say they beat the Leafs. Let's say all four of the teams uh, that weren't in a playoff spot that are playing in win. Let's say it's Columbus, Florida, Rangers, Habs. What are the Blue Jackets doing playing the top seed? They're the best team that won their plan. Why are they playing the best team that didn't have to? It makes no sense. Montreal, if they win, should be playing whoever the top seed is, regardless. Boston. Boston. Yeah. And then you get Montreal, Boston. Hooray. Like that, I don't understand in terms of fairness why you have well, to do that. So here's, here's the wild part is there's a ton of teams that have done extremely well that will not make the playoffs. Yeah. Like teams oh, like that, at all. Like at all, because there are going to be upsets in that first round. The new first round. There's Pittsburgh, now five yeah. rounds. Pittsburgh might miss the playoffs. Well, and, and so here's the, here's the fun part. First off, Steve, I'm surprised you're sticking up for Boston when Toronto has finally got their revenge because the NHL splits its head offices between Toronto and New York. It is very clear that Toronto has now screwed Boston because they may not be the number one seed. After all that hard work in the regular season, Toronto finally got one over on Boston, and you should be happy and proud. Toronto, the Toronto so, offices would not screw themselves into a scenario where they finally make the playoffs <laughs> in a season where they probably weren't going to play Boston in the first round, and now they'll have to play Boston in the first round. Yeah, well, that's what the NHL wants. Also, also, because the NHL doesn't care about ratings Why? beyond the yeah, <laughs> they don't care about ratings beyond the first round. The NHL uh, should want both the Leafs and Bruins to make it to the second round. No, no. Man. Why? Because no. Because because no. Because best. <laughs> what I've learned is nothing matters. <laughs> nothing does matter man nothing, nothing does matter now there was never going to be a perfect scenario for this right we can agree on that yes. there's never going to be something that somebody didn't get sort of screwed right and if you had gone with particularly the fair scenario and i took I, I i know we've talked about this before but i think it's important that we bring this up if you don't if you have a fair tournament for 20 teams you don't have new york chicago or montreal that's why it's happening mm. You know, that's the, that is the fair. You know, if you, if you wanted to do it, you do 20 teams. That's what you do. But if you don't have the, the television revenue from New York, Boston, and Montreal, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the broadcasters Chicago. and it's going to hurt you. It's your only money. So, of Pittsburgh, course, they're going to Pittsburgh might be knocked out of the playoffs in a mini series by a team they were 15 points up on. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> That sounds like a fun Oh, time. it's fun. I'm jacked. <laughs> you know? There were seven and a half wins up on, or 15 losses. Yeah. And you, know, you, you tell Sidney Crosby, don't lose. That's yeah. it. Just don't let yeah. Montreal you beat you. You seen the last dance? 
<laughs> you want to be the greatest? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mm. There you go. And um, I, I like how even in this entire scenario, uh, the Sabres are still getting screwed because oh they're God. sitting right there with Montreal with games in hand that they could have easily won. And they're sense. still not in this playoff format. <laughs> if they had just played their two games, they could be where Montreal is. I think Let's they're going to do points percentage though, aren't they? Yes. Yes, yeah. but that's still unfair to a team that had two games in hand. What, what's crazier? The Sabres no. not making it under this format or zero California teams? I mean, I think zero California teams because for the last decade, they've been so dominant. They have three shots. D- the Sharks in this, I, I would have, before the season began, I would have never bet on them missing the playoffs at all, let alone 24 teams get in and they're not one of them. They're, I'm looking at this right now. I didn't know this. They were last in the West. I beg your pardon. The only two teams in the National Hockey League with fewer points than the San Jose Sharks are the Ottawa Senators and Detroit Red Wings. I beg your pardon. Yeah, and Ottawa was only one point back. Yeah, and they were trying to lose, and so was Detroit. And Ottawa was, or sorry, San Jose was trying to win. It's funny, with, with San Jose, you knew this reckoning was coming, right? And I don't know if it would have sunk this far if oh, Martin goodness. Jones wasn't, wasn't just not Martin Jones anymore. But because I, don't, I believe he's got a contract, I don't, I'm not familiar with his contract, but I believe it extends beyond oh. this season. I don't know what you do oh, with San Jose. Like, you have to replace your goaltender. It's the only shot you have. It's the only shot you have. And yet, how would you get rid of Martin Jones's deal? If- Martin Jones is signed until 2024 at $5.75 million. <laughs> Why? See, you guys, you guys ask, years old. people have asked, like, oh, you got to re-sign Freddie Anderson? No, man. It's not going to happen, mm-hmm. man. It's not going to happen. They're going to have to figure it out. You can't sign goalies to that. You can't. Oh, dear. You cannot do that. You can't do that and then sign an Eric Carlson contract. And the Leafs have two, three Eric Carlson contracts. So oh. you got to cut somewhere. You're, this, this contract always gets overlooked when it comes to San Jose. Ooh. Mark Edward Vlasic. Yes, I know. He signed it when he was 32. $7 million cap hit this year and next year and the year after and the year after and the year after and the year after and the year after. after. It goes until 2026. And he'll be 39 at that point? Something like that. And his salary will – oh, my God. There's really no dip. Or not much of one. 7.25. That's the cash that's being paid out, not the cap hit, right? Right. Okay. Oof Maron. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> that is that's rough. Really tough. Oh boy. Yeah, they got they got some real tough ones. And like Logan Couture is sneaky. Because, like, he's still a good player, but, man, he's making eight <laughs> until 2026 20, unless Cap Friendly just doesn't go beyond that. And he's already 31. Kane, seven again. Oh, my. So the Kane deal is okay. It's okay. It's done if, okay so far. If he keeps it up. Yeah. 28. The, the he's going to be signed in 2025. Yeah. I think the problem with the Kane deal is that no one else is okay. <laughs> Uh, right like every uh, other deal is bad timo meyer's not a that's that's a good contract but like brent burns eight until 2025 and that dude's 35 okay so, that doesn't so make sense. humor me on the brent burns thing for a second <laughs> sure at the time this was a team i think that had just come off like a couple years previously or the year before had just come off losing the stanley cup Mm-hmm. And he was like a Norris Trophy guy and scoring 60 or 70 points or whatever. And so you know that down the road, that's going to hurt you. Um, and I don't know if San Jose's ownership. Can you tell me, Jesse, what's the breakdown of the Brent, Burn- Brent Burns contract? When was it signed? It was signed in 1718. Okay, so that's three years ago. And it, w- it runs from 1718 t- until 2024, 20, 25. 25. It's yeah. $8 million throughout for the cap hit. And the uh, total salary... He paid, was paid out $10 million up front, and then it dips to $5 million by the end of it. Okay, so you can probably offload that to, to whoever's in the Arizona Coyotes position where they want to just grab, you know, silly cap. I'd argue um, that's not as bad as Vlasic. No, it's not. The Vlasic deal was interesting at the time because he was considered, you know, he's an Olympic defenseman when he signed that deal, right? He was a guy that, you know, just won a gold medal and 
uh, was very dependable. But again, he was like 31 or 32 when he signed it. And that's where you get into trouble. And you knew the reckoning for Doug Wilson was coming. You just, you knew. It's just a matter of when. And it'll be interesting for him because if this happens again next season, Doug Wilson's gone and then it's someone else's mess. Uh, and, and so if you're Doug Wilson, it's kind of like, well, I guess I'll try to replace the goalie. And if I can't, then I know the writing's on the wall and it's someone else's problem. But if I'm ownership there, I'm pretty ticked. I, you got to find a way to get a goaltender in there. Um, that you, you could even keep Martin Jones, but you need someone to platoon with Martin Jones. He obviously can't handle the same amount of time on the ice anymore. The Sharks have seven picks this draft. That's not abnormal. Most uh-huh. teams have seven picks. The problem is two of them are their own. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have their own first. They have Tampa somehow. Uh, they have their own second and Colorado second. They don't have a third. They don't have a fourth. They have their own fifth and Ottawa's fifth. They don't have a sixth. They don't have their own seventh, but they have Pittsburgh and Washington's. Guys, Martin Jones <sighs> hasn't been over 9% or 900 save percentage in two years already. Two full years. Bro. I think Bro. they don't deserve to be in this 2014 playoff. Yeah, yeah, so we got distracted there. <laughs> That's okay. Whatever. But, but, uh, yeah, no, I think uh, uh, if we were to do, and maybe we could do this next show, the all screwed list. So who in the NHL is most screwed going into next season? And I would love water. to, I honestly think it'd be fun because we could go do a countdown for all of us. Oh, it's, in terms of their roster breakdowns? Roster breakdown, like going into this summer, who the all screwed NHL teams list. Oh. I think we could have fun with that. Because there'd be some really good teams on there who were totally fucked. Currently topping the list, uh, all 31 of them. Yeah. <laughs> on account of yeah. there's no hockey. True. Um, okay. The, uh, the other thing I want to mention is there are more issues that the NHL needs to work out. So issues like securing enough testing capacity and agreeing to the safety protocols, uh, addressing player concerns about separation from families for a long period of time and determining which two cities will be used as return to play hubs. Uh, they got to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 players back from Europe and seeing if every team will be able to hold a training camp in its own city. There's a good chance that the Canadian clubs will not. Uh, Because the American government announced, I believe today, that any returning athlete in any major sport will be allowed to come in without quarantine. Meaning that um, you're able to come in and just do your business and, and, you know, you have to maintain social isolation or whatever the rules are in your particular state. But in Canada, they've said already, it doesn't matter who you are, you're not coming in without self-isolating for two weeks. Can, can so I that's just... the difference, right? So you're, you're, if you're the Leafs or you're Edmonton or Calgary or whatever, or Vancouver, you're not – it's just not going to happen here. It's just there, not. May, there may come a point in our silly little current history that we're living where the main person in the way of hockey's return is the Canadian Prime Minister. Weird, right? It may well, seriously just, I happen. happen. Well, I just think you don't play. You don't play here. You play. You just don't no, play that's, I think that's, that's what that's they'll that's have it. to do. Yeah. That's yeah. what they'll have to do. And I don't hate that because you needed two hub cities and there's more barriers if you're coming across this border. You know, yeah. the majority of the players are in the States, so you have it there. Yeah. Um, CJ uh, mentioned uh, Vegas as it sounds more and more like Vegas is going to be a hub mm-hmm. um, because their hotels are absurd. Um, like he's, and empty. He's, no, no. Um, something like a <laughs> usual hotel of a certain size will have like four restaurants in it, and the ones in Vegas have like twenty. So they have the actual means of supporting a you know a dozen or so professional sports teams. Mm-hmm. So it could be Vegas. Um, I don't know how Columbus rivals that, but their name keeps getting brought up. Um, and I haven't really seen any others. I, I briefly heard Florida, but like every other sport is there right now. And Arizona, I think, was mentioned as well. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fascinating, man. But it sounds yeah. like Vegas, after after just getting here, um, may end up, uh, I don't know, that may be where we end up seeing half the games. Vegas has become one of the greatest single investments the NHL's ever yeah. made. <laughs> and they didn't oh. make it. Somebody else paid them. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's amazing. Jesse, what were you going to say? You look like you were in I was going to say, yeah, there's been a lot of debate about the legitimacy of the playoffs and people being upset about that. I think we're all on the side of, hey, this still counts. We just want hockey. If it doesn't, then don't watch. Like, if it bugs you that much, then don't watch it. I can't wait for the Leafs to win and just be so awful about it. So awful about it. Yeah. Every, some, here, some, <laughs> everyone, everyone take your, uh, you know, illegitimate Leafs Cup comments and you leave them in the My Team Didn't Win box. 
How about you do that? <laughs> Leave them in the my team yet. are a big bunch of losers box. <laughs> we didn't while win anything. I go celebrate. The Leafs, Steve, play. the Leafs might not even make the playoffs, quote unquote. Adam, you know how you get to Carnegie Hall, don't you? Practice. Woo! Let's <laughs> well, go. I'm, I'm getting ready for it. I'm getting so, ready for it. So uh, I, I got a bit of a hot take on this one. It's funny Man, that you bring that up, Jesse, because this is where I wanted to go anyway. Let's go. I think these will be the most legitimate playoffs we've ever seen. I love this guy. I love this. I'm serious. That's a different dude. That's a different yeah. dude. I think these will be the most legitimate playoffs we've ever seen. You know why? It's harder than ever. We're talking about 24 teams, so about 70% of the NHL joining. And I don't care what the NHL deems as the playoffs. If you're in the first round, which is the best of five series, to me, that's the playoffs. So we're talking about a five-round playoff with another, like, a little side round robin for the top four seeds. And there's potential that a team that will win the cup this year will go five straight rounds to do it. And everybody's coming in healthy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how. Now, we're going to see a lot of hip flexors and hip pointers and healthy and all that shit. Rusty knees. Oh, my God. It's going to be like, it'll be like everybody's healthy and then nobody's healthy. Yeah. But, guys, this is, in my view, going to be the toughest contested cup Ever. Ever. 80 to 90% but, of rosters uh, have not been on the ice for two and a half months. Oh, it's going to be just <laughs> awesome. And I, I would say that if you, if you, like anybody that says that this isn't a legitimate Stanley Cup, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think the competition's ever been fiercer. I don't think the stakes have ever been higher, especially for teams that were going to make the playoffs and ha- now may not. And I don't think that we're putting enough into what teams like Montreal and New York can do. You know, like for Chicago, that, that core was probably never going to see the playoffs again. The Corey Crawford, Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taze. If they saw the playoffs, it would, be, it would be because they had a goalie that stood on their head. It's not a good team. It's not well constructed. They're past their prime. The two guys who are still from that core that can still really, really play, Taze and Kane, right? But now we're going to get to see them in playoff DNA mode. In been there mode. And I'm pretty jacked about that. I'm That's also very excited to see Carey Price come back and face a bunch of weak-ass, crappy shots from players who have not been practicing, who have not sharpened up their game all season to try to ping one off him. And I feel like Carey Price is going to have a massive advantage over shooters because Carey Price has already got the skills – you know, you can argue that he hasn't played to the Carey Price level that we had become accustomed to in the last couple of years, and I would agree with that. But if Carey Price gets hot, Carey Price only needs to have a good 20-game stretch. And the, I- and the Canadians are in the cup final, man. That's it. This yeah. is exciting, and this will be, in my mind, the most competitive Stanley Cup we have ever, ever, ever seen. Right. Can I say, like, this, this is the most trying and weird and wacky time in – any of these players' lifetimes, super weird, super strange. We all deal with it in our own way. I get it. If Austin Matthews and Freddie Anderson have not been taking advantage of the fact that one of them is Austin Matthews and one of them is Freddie Anderson, <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. It's your team's starting goaltender and one of the best goal scorers in the Ever. world living together. I just smacked my camera over there. You're living together – you got to be taking advantage of that. Please tell me Austin is taking shots on Freddie. Please tell me Freddie is taking shots from Austin. Please. Please. You can't not take advantage of this. They have been working on their alley-oops. Ah! Like, and they can do their alley-oops. You can do whatever you want in your cool-down time. But for the love of God, please, please tell me you've been taking advantage of your weird, strange, truly unique situation. Please. Please. We'll see. Yeah. The, evenness, the evenness of the teams is what really excites me because it's like we're holding the playoffs at the begin, beginning of the season when mm-hmm. all these rosters are fresh and they're just getting started. So I feel like when it comes out, we're going to have a true champion, right? Yeah. Well, what, what, yeah. what happens, though, at the beginning of every season for the Leafs? They the win every out. game 7-6 seven, six, and 6-5 six, and they blow a couple. <laughs> but they, it's, it's that weird time of year where there's no structure, there's no – there's no uh, like coaching hasn't sunk in yet. There's no defensive discipline. It's just teams relying on their skill. Mm-hmm. So Adam with the playoff DNA there 
and some of the skilled players on Chicago, and we don't have to worry as much about like their sort of thin back end. Yeah, and three months they, to get healthy. They could do it. Yeah. I mean, they Chicago, could do, or Chicago imagine a lot coming of in for a long time, right? Yeah. But imagine coming in cold against McDavid and Dreisaitl. That's true. Well, what they're not going to be rusty. That's the thing. It's, the young guys are going to have that advantage that they yeah. can just get back into this because they have these young bodies. Who, the Leafs have the advantage of being young. It's, it's Edmonton, in Chicago. Against... Yeah. Oh, That's oh, one of the most baby. fascinating series there oh, is. That'll be great. It's one if of they fasc- choose to go with that seating. We now, don't know what seating they're going with. Right. If they choose to go with that seating. The other very interesting thing that I've heard, and I don't know if it's true. I'll need confirmation. Maybe you can Google it. Uh, supposedly any player who's in Sweden or has been in Sweden throughout all this has been on the ice. The rinks have been open. So like bet on teams with a lot of Swedish players. Mm. It's fascinating, especially for the Rangers because they have Georgiev, Shishjorkin, uh, two amazing young goaltenders. And Lundqvist. And then they got Lundqvist. Yeah. Who, if this is true, has been... Easily the third best out of them, mm-hmm. but has been on the ice for the last two and a half months. Yeah. Anyone who's been on the ice for the past two and a half months has an unbelievable advantage. The winner of the Con Smythe, if this is true, it, I'll be shocked if it's not a Swede. I'll yeah, be maybe. Shocked. So well, just to confirm what you're saying, Stephen, uh, the rinks in Sweden are open. Uh, Marcus Sorensen of the Sharks, who aren't even in the playoffs, is, has said he's been skating with a couple of buddies. And yeah, there's other reports that you can just book ice. Uh, Pedersen is in Sweden and he's been skating as well. So there you go. Yeah, anybody. Man, who- they kept schools open. They kept rinks open. What are they doing that we're Imagine not getting? Imagine you're going up against a completely warm Elias Pedersen in the first <laughs> round. Oof. Glad he's not in my Who is you? Who is it? It's Vancouver versus Minnesota. I and you're a goalie co- in the playoffs. And no, who is it? Dubnik? No, Minnesota was seven and three in their last ten. They were chugga chugging up yeah, the standings. But they sold and they were trying not to win. They did sell. It was yeah. kind of funny. But dude, you you're every year there's one team that sells and goes on a run. It's dumb. But you're Dubnik or Staylock, and you gotta go in against a totally ready to go Elias Petterson. Forget that. You're Zach Parise and you gotta shut him down. How about this? Uh, depending on where Jakob Markstrom's been this whole time, he could have been taking, you know, wrist shots and clap bombs from Elias Pettersson this whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bet on Vancouver, folks. <laughs> like, yeah. How do we convince Willie to go to Sweden and not, where is he, California? It looks where like, is he? Where is he? Know, all based on his Instagram, he looks like he's very, somewhere very hot. So yeah. no, he looks like he's in a sweet. 90s Baywatch episode, man. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, him and Alex oh, just hanging out. Can we, can we, get, him, can yeah. we get him to Sweden somehow? Hopefully he's just so Scandinavian <laughs> that he's wearing shorts just arbitrarily. <laughs> yeah. This is warm to me. Like, uh, that's not what he talks like at all. He's Everyone north of a certain thing is Ivan Drago. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be, be totally fascinating. And, and I'm sorry, if you're a hockey fan and yeah, okay. The, the thing that shouldn't even need to be said is, I hope it's all done safely. Okay, yes, great. Now that that's out of the way. Who is not excited to watch this? Are you joking? I don't know. That, that, I was saying to Jesse before the show, I'm like, I, can't, I don't care. I can't bring myself to care. And then they give me the slightest thing to nibble on. And I'm like, ah, I can't wait for this to come back. Are you yeah. joking? Hmm. Oh, it's great. I just, you know what? I, I don't know, like, I just don't even know what to watch on TV. Like, what do I even put on now? Like, after the, the last <laughs> dance of Too Hot to Handle, like, what else is there? We're There's, running I'm, out of shows. I'm going to rewatch The Office. I'm going to, like, because I finally finished now. I'm going to rewatch. I'm going to have to watch Parks and Rec all the way through. Like, I, like I'm just, I'm trying to just bomb shows because I got nothing else. There's TV nothing else. is really going to suck in the fall oh. because now is when they're filming all the fall shows and they can't yeah. do any of that stuff. At least now, like, you see, like, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire still on TV because they filmed that back in January and all that. But now we're going to have no fall TV. At least uh, hopefully we have sports. But there's yeah. like, there's, there's little glimmers of hope. Like th- this is where I'm at right now. Yesterday I saw an episode of, um, what do they call it? Pioneer Woman with Reed Drummond, the cooking show. And her kids filmed oh, it all on their like phones and stuff. So it's <laughs> so a new episode shot during that? quarantine in their house. Ha- oh, Adam, it's great. She makes like tacos and fried stuff and cakes and oh, what channel delicious. is this on the 
goofy i don't know it's like it's either the like the cooking channel or something like that or hgtv or okay one of those ones and she just smiles into the camera and says hey there would you like some delicious food and i always go yes reed drummond and then she makes it and it's great I've never heard of it. She no. never doesn't make food. That's the best part of the show. Mm. Okay. Okay. And her kids filmed it. You're That's, not. I gotta. You're not selling this, Steve. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> sound dives and dives, and dives enough for me. It's every I cooking go to show. Town what are you talking watching. about? <laughs> yeah, no. well, oh yeah, you're gonna watch some dude with a flavor saver grunt. And, oh, it's good. I do. That's a great show. I don't yeah. care what anyone says. <laughs> I'd rather watch Storage Wars. <laughs> That's There's no Storage Wars. <laughs> There's no storage wars right now. So you got Reed Drummond or screw yourself, Jesse. I'll That's watch what the you reruns. Got. Reruns are good enough. No, watch Reed Drummond, not reruns. <laughs> All right? But what if what if this abandoned thing goes for eight hundred dollars and then they open it and there's ten thousand yeah. dollars worth of stuff in it? You never they, they never find any good shit in there. Like it's never like once a season there's like, wow, that's kind of cool. Well, you found a boat motor. Like and the number is <laughs> the number is based on just what the guy feels. So oh here's a popsicle stick, that's five hundred dollars. And here's like, <laughs> <laughs> here's this, that's this uh, old hat, that's a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get at least seventy five dollars for that. And here, what, what we got? Is, oh, that's CBC Kids. You can only get that in Canada. That's at least four hundred dollars. Like, he just makes it up. Yeah. He just oh, yeah. makes it up. And it, like, they should do like a little disclaimer <clears throat> afterwards. We found out it was actually worth forty cents. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, because you have up. to find a buyer. Yeah. Well, then they take it to those like antique road show kind of places, and they're the like, pickers, right, "Yeah, what's what's this chest worth?" And then they do like a half an hour strung out thing where they have eight commercial breaks in between, and then you find out it's <laughs> worth two hundred fifty dollars. Hufflepuff it's mouse across pads. the screen. Yeah, Vaughn, eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Six hundred dollars right here. Hufflepuff mouse pad. If you can find a Gryffindor, that that shit goes for over a thousand for sure. I don't know why I'm making them talk this way. Yeah. Oh my God. There's they're a really drunk. It's it's really inappropriate and bad, but there's a very funny Will Sasso Mad TV skit on Antiques Roadshow. Oh, is and, it? Oh, it's very funny. I'll I'll just let you look it up. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's amazing. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> it might be dated, but I remember at the time being thinking it was hilarious. Um, sometimes you you know sometimes you go back and you watch things from that era and you're like, well, that's not that funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> South Park holds up, but like some of the sh- the other shit from the '90s or the early 2000s, you're like, ooh. Have you ever rewatched kids shows that you're really into? Like, have you ever gone back and watched an episode of Arthur, and you're like, how was yeah. I interested in this plot line Loved as a five year old? Do not get it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, you know. Uh, what was it? Um, Recess. Recess. Recess is still pretty good. It, yeah, it I holds up. I think Hey Arnold holds up. Hey Arnold holds up. I haven't seen um, Hey Arnold recently. But. Uh, uh looney looney tunes does uh for just the nostalgia factor mm-hmm. um but yeah but. I know what you're saying like <laughs> what's that but some of those old ones oh, oh yeah oh yeah i think well, they don't they run made... it on tv anymore because they have to edit all that shit out like it was because bugs bunny was made in like 1875 like yeah. it was made yeah. forever ago <laughs> And it represents 1875. Yeah. Some of the I'm old wondering. Disney stuff because um, was Walt Disney did not hate. Uh, he, he hated a lot of specific people. Well, he didn't. Okay. So <laughs> interesting That's very about delicate, that. Jesse. Yes. yes. That's very... So it's, it's so weird with that because like there's no, it's not really confirmed. Like, like Henry Ford from the same time wrote a book and like, which was a series of articles about Jewish people. and was a big fan of Hitler and things like that. Henry, Henry Ford would like, with, with Walt Disney, it's like whispered about, but there's no real out there confirmation about it, which is strange. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel, like, I feel like it's one of those things that everybody knows about and you don't really talk about it. Yeah. And the fact that it's Disney and that it was Walt Disney, that it just kind of passes and we kind of all know it, but we're not going to call it out. Right, yeah, well, yeah. And you know what? It's... It's probably, unfortunately, a good reflection of where the country was at at the time and where the world was at at the time. So anyway, long story short, I think Animaniacs still holds up too. Welcome Just throwing to that the podcast, there. everybody. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, Animaniacs, the problem is they use a lot of pop culture references like, like that are old. The, yeah. You'll, they'll use like a celebrity that hasn't been big for 20 years and you're like, I don't even know who this person is. Yeah. yeah. I watched Please. High School Musical at the beginning of the pandemic. Does not hold up was not dude as it was never good no, <laughs> no it was good never good it was amazing when i was 16 
I love any it. movie that relied on graphics at all from oh, longer yeah. than 10 years ago yeah. is garbage. Yeah. Um, man. Actually, when you see the old Star Wars movies from like the 70s, it makes you appreciate how ahead of their time they were because they don't look bad. They're not great. That's true. But they're not like, whoa, that's crazy bad. Like the Because they did a lot of the stuff, the animatronics and all that themselves. So a lot of it wasn't computer generated. It was just camera tricks. But in the 90s, they were like, no, we're just going to do, we're not doing any of that shit. We're going to do it all digitally. And now it looks bad. Like the, the, the prequel movies that came out in the 90s look worse to me than the ones from the 70s because they cut corners. Um, and they were trying to use new technology that just wasn't there yet. So What's, you know that GIF? It's it's from a movie where the guy's he's he's like sitting at a table and his head explodes. What movie mm-hmm. is that from? Any oh. any movie with like like masks or anything like that from like the late eighties? Like monsters, kind of. Yeah, they don't hold up at all. No, they no. don't hold up at no. all. No, mm-hmm. a lot of Mon- scary movies aren't scary. Yeah, you ever gone back and watched watch? The Ring? I've never seen the ring. No, okay, I've never so seen the ring. It. The ring is one of the dumbest horror movies of all time. And even at the time, like I like horror movies, I like scary movies because I think it's hilarious, and I love watching in a group of people who get freaked out because I think it's just the funniest thing I've ever seen. So in high school, we were watching the ring, and it was quite. It's kind of one of those parties where like everybody, except for me, of course, had a girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like making out and then screaming and then making out, and and the whole thing with the ring is. It has nothing to do with the little girl coming out of the TV and being scary or coming out of the bathtub or the, uh, the she comes out of a, a well at one point as well. Yeah. It's the camera angle. So what it does is it goes boop, boop, boop. Like one, two, three, you get, you get, basically you go, you see wide shot, you see close in, and then you just basically see like her eye. Yeah, and, and they're all jump cuts. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like Steve's videos. They're, Who they're uses a jump horrifying. cut? Bunch of dicks. <laughs> So, so it's all camera angles and you go, oh yeah, this kind of sucks. Um, but, <laughs> but you know what's great? Yeah. A movie that's super good is all, like most of the paranormal activities are really good. I, no I love the first paranormal activity. That's probably it's my terrifying. number one horror movie of all time. So good. It's the best. So good. I'm with you, man. It's, it's so the- good. So Ooh, good. Oh. I gotta watch that. And okay. the second so, one is not even as bad. You know, like no, it's not bad. Usually suck, but it's yeah. pretty good. Like number three it. loses the plot a little bit with the pool the cameras and stuff like that. Leave, but- <laughs> leave number three out of this. So the it's first like the you- ring camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like ringing the doorbell. Like hey, I don't. Uh, but, but <laughs> I don't need that. The, Steve, the great thing about those movies is that you didn't need any special effects. It's like yeah. when Blair Witch came out, which does not hold up, by the way. Um, it, it didn't hold up at the time. I didn't think it was ever that scary. I think it was just the rumor that it was true. Yeah. Right. And oh, I wonder if the. Like, yeah. <laughs> the friggin' booger. <laughs> See every pore on the person's face. <laughs> Stupid booger. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you pick up uh, a DVD copy of Paranormal Activity, you hop, pop it into a DVD player and you pretend, like, hey, I'm about to watch a hidden cam documentary thing on this ghost that happened in this, in this couple's house you're you're in it like yeah. the movie is so well shot that you can believe it yeah so, yeah big fan you, you want to be watching with your couch to the wall <laughs> yeah you want your couch along the wall you don't want your those middle of the room couches where <laughs> there's something behind you no Somebody way grabs yeah. yeah well i think it also that's great horror movies attack you at your most vulnerable kids right and when you're sleeping and that's where paranormal activity is about a, a demon freaking people out while they're sleeping and messing with them in the middle of the night. And so, like, of course, what are you, it's so perfect. It's so perfectly written because you go to bed right after you watch this fucking movie and you're yeah. terrified. Because you're watching it at night and they yes! know that. And you're yes! about to try and go to sleep and they know that. And yeah. you're not going to be able to sleep. Oh, it's perfect. It's so great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I don't know how we got here, but I absolutely love that movie. I'm so glad. Jesse, we're just vibing so hard on that movie. It's yeah, great. it's a great movie. Uh, yeah, by I'm the way, stoked for uh, McDavid versus the Blackhawks. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it'll be cool. Um... Patrick Laine, I thought this was funny. And then we're going to do a bit of an extended press conference today because other than the news being confirmed and the, and the laundry list of things the NHL still has to sort out, we don't really know much more. Uh, but I did want to talk about Patrick Laine because what, I think Patrick Laine is without question one of the best quotes in the NHL. And if he were in a market, and no, no offense to Winnipeg on this one, but if he was in a market like Toronto, it would be bad. If he was in a market like New York, I think it'd be good. Toronto He's- tends to take things negatively. So if you perform poorly... And then you say why you've performed poorly. 
then then there are writers in this city who will completely trash you and there'll be you know we have a very very hardcore way of dealing with our athletes here and i think it's just it's like sexual frustration we just want to get it done with the cup uh, he's, he's the finished phil kessel he is <laughs> so, but but if you had him in new york i think people would really like him because when patrick line is on he's electrifying and he's got one hell of a personality and he's funny and this is one of the guys that you go man i wish you were scoring 40 goals every year because i would build an entire marketing plan around this player like he is, that's a marketable star, except for that gross chin beard that he had. So I don't know remember that thing? About. It was it, Well, and just, you couldn't, that, that beard looks really stupid if you score 17 goals. <laughs> but he scored a million, and mm-hmm. so they let him keep it. Right, exactly. So Patrick Line said, my game is probably going to look terrible since I haven't skated for two months. It's always a struggle to come back after a long period when you haven't skated. How much do you love the bluntness of that? It's absolutely correct and perfect. And like is one of the biggest of the factors, one of the biggest factors in all this, like they're doing like squats and pushups and stuff. They can work out. Okay. Remember when the Toronto media spent an entire summer, like five years ago, ripping on Phil Kessel for admitting that in the summer, he had only skated five, uh, five to 10 times. Mm-hmm. I think it was 10 times. Oh, yeah, I've only been on the ice like 10 times this summer. What about zero times? Almost every player has been on the ice zero times. Unless they're in Sweden or have it in their house. How many players, man, I know these guys are rich, but how many of them have ice in their house? Well, you'd have to have that fake stuff, wouldn't you? They might have the fake stuff, but it's but still the fake the stuff. Yeah. yeah, Guys are rollerblading. Like we saw Mitch Marner out ro- rollerblading in his And that's good. Off. That's good that's for the muscles the yeah. and stuff. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely not the same. And what was he wearing? He's wearing his NHL 21's outfit, you know, dangling his dog. <laughs> it's not Yo, the I kept, same, man. I kept watching that. I'm like, the most impressive part about this is he has not rollerbladed over his dog's foot. If you've ever done that in so your life, impressive. it is, is one of the saddest things you've ever done. Because you, you think you're having fun with the dog. Dog's having fun with you and accidentally skate the wrong way. And you're like, damn it. And then they yelp and go to you for help. <laughs> yeah because you're the protector you piece of shit how could you do that how could you do that but now well okay so mitch martyr's going up going up against like a lab or something like that <laughs> he's basically and going then up we're just gonna himself. throw him into here's chara we're just yeah. gonna throw him into well, here's a team he, coached by john tortorella let me hey throw guys this- i know you're rusty so tell you what just hack and slash for the first 40 minutes have fun have well, fun. I, I think I, if I'm Char, I'm a little bit more worried about Mar- playing Marner. Not because I'm... What, are they going to call something? No, they're not going to call anything, but, but Char is 43? Yeah. Like, I'm afraid that guy. his body won't work anymore. You know, if you sit down for too long, your bones get stiff and it's hard to get them going again when you're yeah. that age. You've been playing you, professional hockey for 20 plus years. Once you get the motor running, it's good. It's yeah. just you don't want to shut the motor off because you know... Like my dad had a car that was like a very cheap MG when I was growing up and he tried to teach me how to do a stick shift in it, but it wouldn't idle in neutral. So I couldn't, every time I went to switch gears from forward to reverse, the car just shut down. And that's how I look at Zidane Chara. just a bigger version of that. Like, he, like if you now he's, he's in good shape though, he's in incredible shape. Yeah. But at a certain point, mother nature says, I don't that's think enough. so. So that's when, enough. And if he doesn't, that's even more impressive and good for him. And he's already an athletic freak. I'm not taking anything thing away from him. I would just be, if I'm him, I was 20 years old when Mitch Marner was born, right? Like, think about that. Oh my God. Right? So, oh God. I'm, the it's, there's a difference. Gretzky. There's yeah. a difference. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Anyway, Patrick Laine says his game is probably going to be a little bit rusty. And this is what I was talking about with Carey Price, right? Because I think for goalies, not that you don't lose something in the, you know, but you're, a lot of your fast twitch muscles are always going to be there. And your reaction times, while they might be off, a lot of goaltending now is positioning. And Carey Price has been very good at position, right? He's, been, he's always a very, very good positional goalie. He's tall. Um, and that's why I think a bunch of – like, you thought William Nylander was going to shoot pucks over the net when he was warmed up. Just wait till he comes back. It's going to be players, awesome to field goals all, all day. The players with the best basics are going to excel. Bingo. And I think I – think, honestly, I look at a guy like Carey Price, I'm like, there's some basics there. I don't care how he's performed. And I guarantee Carey Price had some sort of injury this year that he was nagging him. And now oh, yeah. he gets to sit down and recover. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. I wonder, 
if, you know, you mentioned Freddie Anderson uh, earlier, Steve, and I wondered, you know, Jesse, bringing that up, I wonder if, you know, I mean, we haven't seen anything, we haven't heard anything, but it's, it's Freddie sure seemed off. And I wonder if this time has allowed him to become more Freddie, you know, a little bit, whatever it was that was bothering him. Something's all, you're always injured if you're if, proactive. If you're the Leafs and you know Matthews and Freddie are together, you helicopter fake ice to their house and, and all their equipment, like, what an unbelievable advantage. It's something I just can't get past that all these players are going to be so rusty and yep. so cold. And you have those two who happen to be living together. Oh my God, you got to take advantage of that. I really hope they've been doing something, something, anything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but like you mentioned, like rest might be the most important part for a lot of guys. You know who uh, the Leafs could get back, who I totally forgot about? Ilya Mikheyev. Yeah. yeah. I, I completely forgot back. about that. They completely will get forgot. Back. Mm -hmm. Although he's going to be extra rusty because he's been playing like six months. Yeah. Well, he, he didn't really rely on his shot or anything anyway. No. Yeah. He like, and I, he was on the ice before this all stuff. I'm excited. It's if jump Leafs, ball. It's complete Leafs, jump ball. If the Leafs had to play Boston, I'm excited that Mikheyev would be back because he yes. seems like somebody Boston would actually hate. He, he, like the Leafs losing Riley was obviously bad because their defense it was bad enough to begin with. But, Ilya Mikheyev, by the time he got hurt, became this part of th – their offense was undeniable. There was just something about what he brought to the team and the way he supported uh, defensively. There were so many times where he was the defenseman back. Yeah. Like the only one or he was supporting on the right or he was supporting on the left. He just brought this one little cog to the Leafs that made them so, so hard to beat that made them an almost guaranteed four or five goal game and losing him really, really killed them. Yeah. But like I said, so we were making this huge deal about this seed and that seed and that seed it's jump ball. Mm -hmm. It's complete jump ball. So I, I don't know. What are we doing seeds for then? I, I guess to keep up appearances, but like I, I have a hard time believing any one team has an advantage over any one team. It well, sounds like the one advantage you have is having Swedish players. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think they are going to – I think the NHL is pushing brackets. So unless you can get all the teams to vote that down, which it's hard to get all the teams and all the players – it's basically – the NHL is at an advantage here. Anytime you're in collective bargaining, whether it's for a contract or not, the reason you have a union is because you're trying to unify everybody's positions because they're not going to agree on everything. The problem with the NHL is you've got 700 different ways that they think that this could get done. And – I, I would have a hard time I – I would, I would be genuinely shocked if the NHL tabled a proposal and the NHLPA didn't genuinely like it and they were able to find the votes because every team and every player rep would have to then get to it, whereas the NHL is like four guys, right? It's like get Bettman, Bill Daly, and their secretaries, like the people who, who get stuff done for them. And, and so it's a lot easier to maneuver when you've got this, a small amount of people than a big amount of people. I'd be very interested. Um, I hope they don't do brackets. I hope they do seeds. Uh, I think everybody thinks that's a lot more fair. Um, I think there's a lot of holes. If they do a bracketed way of doing this, I think there's a lot more holes in that in terms of competitive fairness than there would be if you were seeding it. But if, that's if, what we're going to worry about. If you do brackets, you do get the advantage of just the funness of it because that's what, that's what the attraction to uh, March Madness is. It's just, yeah. okay, a 16 seed upsets a, a one seed, and all of a sudden, this is the 16 seeds bracket. Now they're going up against all these teams. And it's just, you, add, you have that factor. And once it happens, there's going to be the initial, uh, Boston, they should get the advantage of the, the nine seed. But like when upsets happen, people are start being like, oh, this is so much fun. So you also get that factor if, we do go, if they do go with brackets as opposed to seeding. But both work. The it's longer fun. this takes, the more I'm like, I don't know if there's a wrong way to do it right. other than unsafe. Yeah. Yeah. Have the Leafs play the uh, Coyotes. I don't care. Like, just <laughs> do whatever. Kessel's Friggin return. We can make yeah. a story out of that. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, not Matthews. It's Kessel. You're right. Yeah. That's, Kessel, yeah. Kessel, that's Kessel, Kessel and Matt, basically, Kessel is in Arizona. So is Matthews. Um, and Kessel has skated as many times over this break as he did that one summer. Yeah, there you so go. We'll see where he goes. There you know you, you yeah. fire. Maybe Kessel would be awesome because like he just doesn't skate anyway. 
He'll be great. He's that guy who just shows up. Hey, what's up? Didn't he yeah. score like a pile of goals after that comment anyway? Wasn't it like 30 plus goals or something? Phil Kessel never didn't score a pile of goals. Yeah. Like it, he struggled this season, but That's if you look at his career, like find the weak point. Only he ha- never had a 30 goal season with the Leafs, right? Did he not? Mm, no, his first season was. It was okay. He never had a forty goal season. A with forty the is what I'm thinking about. So he okay. was Sorry. he was um, he was one of those guys. You know how I called Jack Eichel like the only thirty goal scorer to never th- score thirty goals. Yeah, Phil Kessel is the only forty goal scorer to never yes. score forty goals. That's the man, one. Steve. He had more thirty goal seasons with the Leafs than Patrick Kane. Than Patrick had Kane had when he was listed as one of the top NHL players of all time. And Taves. No, Phil Kessel has had. One, two, three. That's crazy. Four. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Six. He's had six 30 goal seasons. He had 20 goals in the lockout shortened season, so he would have had seven. And zero 40 goal seasons. Zero 40 goal seasons, but two of his best seasons, sorry, three of his best seasons in Pittsburgh. He had 70 points, but only 23 of them were goals. What did I tell you, Pittsburgh fans? He had 92 points. 58 of which were assists. And then he had 82 uh, points, 55 of which were assists. Uh, it was mm-hmm. just 27 goals. Phil Kesselman, mm-hmm. he's so underrated. He's so criminally. That dude has played 1,066 games. What? Yeah. Beg your pardon? He's yeah. 32. He's got lots of hockey left. Hall of well, Fame. We'll see. What's that? Hall of Fame? He'll struggle to get the votes. Ooh, I don't know if he'll get like, the votes. Just because it's such a popularity contest. But like by the end of it, he'll have at least 1,200 games and probably – he's got 861 points now. He might have 1,000 points. He'll have 1,000 1, points. Point. Yeah, 1, yeah, 1, 1,000 points, at least 400 points. goals. 500 assists, 400 two cups. goals, two cups. Yes. He, Phil Kessel is already better than some of the players that have made it in. Let's put it that way. He'd be a lock now in my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, zero trophies. Uh, you got the Bill Masterton. Yeah, and he also deserved. It's not like a. He deserved the con Smythe that first year in Pittsburgh. Like that was ridiculous. I know Crosby had a run, but like Phil was Phil was crazy good. Twenty two. Oh wait, which one was it? Was well, it there the was first a twenty two or, the or two? One? Both of them were great. Yeah. Oh, so times. good. That frigging guy had forty five points in forty nine playoff games. Those two runs. Mm-hmm. Goofy. 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 Wow. God damn, he's so good. Yeah, yeah. He over his career, seventy-seven points in eighty-seven playoff games. He was he was a point a game player in Boston. Mm-hmm. He was just under a point a game with the Leafs that one time. <laughs> oh God, he's so good. Phil Kessel, man, get on board. He's gonna he's gonna win the consummate this year. This is his year, <laughs> and it's gonna get Taylor Hall a big bunch of money. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, uh, Phil Castle wins the Conn Smythe, and the biggest beneficiary, Taylor Hall. Taylor, <laughs> eleven million dollars. Let's go. Eleven million. Uh, Jesse, let's do the yes. press conference. All right. Adam, the Steve sir. Press first question is for you. Mm-hmm. For Adam's history corner. Okay. You're going to be tasked with talking about D-Day. Oh, what about it? So uh, this don't just add. Okay, by the way, you can't just be like D Day. Like fuck, me. that's We're a lot. Into it, We're Adam. Into uh, it. Talk about D Day. Yeah, and Adam, extrapolate. So, we could be here uh, for hours. <laughs> from 1700 to 1800, the world existed. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about talk that about period that. of time? Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, please exactly <laughs> for talk God's sakes? What about D Day? So Ben Woodbury mm-hmm. wants to know. He says, I have a question for Adam's History Corner. As an active duty American sailor with the D-Day anniversary coming up in the next few weeks, Mm -hmm. I was curious to Adam's thoughts on Canadian Major General Rodney Frederick. Interesting. Keller. Is that that his full name? Rodney Frederick Leopold Keller and his role during the invasion invasion on Juneau Beach. Hope all is well. So so I'm going to disappoint you because I know more about the World War I Canadian generals than I do of the American ones. Sorry, of the... um, of the World War II one. So I know World War I a lot better than I know World War II in terms of that. And Which I think that's the because I'm a bit of what you would expect based on our education. Right. Because, <laughs> because in North America, and it's not the same in Europe, but in North America, World War II is like, especially coming out of the US, is the only war that ever happened. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's that in the American Revolutionary War, and nobody has ever fought before or since. And oh, a little bit of Vietnam too. 
And it's, it's a, uh, uh, and that's just because America is such a beast when it comes to pop culture, right? Everything that they would do. I mean, why would America, which was in World War I for a year and a half, make a big deal of it the same way England or Canada or, you know, France or Russia or Germany would. Um, so I, I can't really speak specifically to the general that, that he's talking about. And I should, this is great because it's a nice little blind spot for me. I'm going to go look this up afterwards. However, I will say that the Canadians were the ones that advanced the furthest on D-Day and nobody talks about it. Now there, it's been said that their, um, their beach, Juno beach, uh, was, um, less defended than what the Americans faced. And there's no question that when you look at uh, the beaches that the Americans had to fight to, and, and the British as well, there were far more, um, there were far more pillboxes, and I believe they were up higher as well. So if you've got to climb a mountain to get into those pillboxes, and you all know Saving Private Ryan, you've seen that, you know, when you're bringing up, like imagine you're, you're, you're on a boat, they drop you on a beach, the thing comes down, you have no protection, and you've got to be the guy with the flamethrower, the natural gas on your back, so if somebody hits you, you explode, right? And then you got to climb a hill with that and then try to clear out people in a pillbox. It's crazy. Um, so the Canadians were able to get the furthest inland at that point. Um, and that is something that because Canada has a fixation, and I've said this before, and it's not wrong. It's just the fixation that we have on Vimy Ridge, uh, which was strategically somewhat important and turned out to be okay, but they needed – something to rally around there were battles that canada was a part of that were far more historically significant got a lot more done not that not that vimy ridge should be diminished i'm not saying that but there you know it, the, the the thing about vimy was it was ours we controlled it it was the time that we became a country and the first time we ever controlled our thing and that was the thing we don't do enough to honor juno beach uh uh you know we talk about dieppe which was a total disaster you know in 1942 where a bunch of Canadians got absolutely slaughtered on the beach. They were used like guinea pigs, basically. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because, wow. So basically, Dieppe was, Russia's like, hey, we're fighting this entire war. Can you do something? And, then, and Churchill was like, uh, well, we're in North Africa. And he's like, yeah, that's no, you need to open a second front in Europe. And so they're like, okay, well, we'll just, uh, we'll try Dieppe. So they go to a beach with a gigantic fucking um, cliff. cliff and that's all pebbles and there's no cover and they and then a whole bunch of Canadians get slaughtered. That's what happened. Oh. It's brutal. If you look up Dieppe, it's brutal. Just a total disaster. And it's right, you know, that we focus on the, stra the, the tragedy. But you also need to look at some of the successes that they had. Juno Beach was a tremendous, tremendous success for the Canadian military. And because we are smaller, our, our cultural uh, footprint is smaller. And our, frankly, our history system is is flawed, genuinely flawed. I don't think I ever heard anything about Juno Beach in history in high school, not once. Um, it's, it's, it's a shame because there's a lot to be proud of there. The Americans are extremely proud of, and they should be, their accomplishments on D-Day. The British, extremely uh, 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 proud of and feel accomplished by what they were able to get done on D-Day. Canadians, you, you ask them about it, like we have an award named after that, the Junos. Nobody knows what that's for. It's like, you know, that's, you mean, that's what that's I, yes. I literally did not <laughs> yeah. know that. You're oh, you mean, the, you, mean mind. The, you mean the Roman <laughs> god no Juno? Idea. Is that what you're talking about? People have no idea. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. And, and you know what else pisses me off too? And this is what? a frustrating point. We don't talk about what the Canadians did in Italy. Like it's just completely, oh, the Canadians were in Italy? That's crazy. Conquered Sicily. Conquered it. Like it's crazy. They made... They were part of the force that made Benito Mussolini uh, give up his power. And, and then he was arrested by the next government. And then Hitler flew in and rescued M Mussolini and then took over Northern Italy and said, Mussolini's the head of this and you run this and it's going to be all German soldiers because Italy capitulated. As soon as, you know, the Canadians and Americans invaded, Italy went, okay, we're done. Italy's role in both world wars is actually kind of, it's kind of funny. Like in a very not funny way, but yeah. like they, they were complete liabilities in both wars. Yeah, France, France gets saddled with the oh we surrender stuff. Italy should sort of have gotten a little no, bit of that. You know, Italy sucked about, in both yeah. wars. Well, and, and that's because yeah, there's there's some issues with that as well. But like anyway, long story short, Canadians have a ton to be proud of with Juno Beach. I don't even know enough about Juno Beach, uh, which is embarrassing to say. And that's the that's the sad part. There's so many highlights of. Not, it's not about winning a battle. 
right? In this particular case, the context, you know, we don't really think like that anymore. If this was 150 years ago, it'd be like, well, we won this battle and that battle and we're part of the British empire and we win. That's what we do. We win. We conquer the world. For us, it's about defining yourself on a global stage next to two gigantic economic forces, England, the old economic force and America, the rising economic force. And the, you know, the two, you know, that, that was one superpower passing the torch to the other. And here's little Canada with a population of like 11 million coming in and making major differences. Ask people in the Netherlands how they feel about the Canadian war effort. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's a, uh, Juno beach was a well-executed, here's what, to, to, in conclusion, well-executed, well-done battle plan. They learned their lessons from Dieppe. They were in control of it. Um, and specifically, and by the way, I, 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 can you please give me the name again, Jesse, his name? Uh, the general or the person who asked the question? Our, our question asker. Uh, ben Woodbury. Ben, if I didn't say this before, it should have been the first thing out of my mouth. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, I, I would like to know more. So Ben, you've exposed a historical blind spot for me in Canadian history, which is a lot of people, a lot of people just have because we don't study ourselves uh, enough. Um, I'm going to check it out more, but I do know it was a very, very successful mission as, as yeah. you know, as it was a day for everybody. My grandpa fought in, in uh, D-Day. Wow. Really? Uh, wow. He was wo- wounded in Salerno, Italy, uh, mm-hmm. went home to recover. And then after that, he was asked to go report to Scotland for a mission that the Navy was preparing for. And it ended up being D-Day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. They kept that hidden That's from crazy everybody. Story. Yeah. Um, and I will say this. Well, once this all ends and we can go travel again, any Canadians going to the Netherlands, Stop leaning into it so hard. Yeah, you didn't do anything. You didn't. No, no. <laughs> you didn't because do it. I noticed. I noticed when I was there. It was. It was only there for like a couple of days. But when I was there, I noticed. I noticed all the Canadians because they were Canadian at you. Yeah. Yeah. Really Canadian at you because there's this thing like, oh, if you go to the Netherlands and you're a Canadian, they'll treat you really. It's 2020, man. Like, stop leaning into it so hard. You didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, it was 80 years ago, man. Just, you know, be yeah. happy that your grandfathers made the sacrifice. Honor them and stop yeah. expecting free shit, yeah. assholes. All right, here's, like, come your, on. here's your magnet and your weed. Get out of my store. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I know, it's the, it's the entitlement factor, man. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave them alone. They have a great country. Go and enjoy. It is a great com- uh, country. Stroopwafel. Mm. Jesse, next question. Uh, the next question is for uh, Steve Dangle. This is from Britain eight six two eight four nine two. They write Britain to if wait is this another World War Two question or no 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 okay <laughs> hi could you please tell Steve to make some Red Dead Redemption videos oh thanks yes you guys I really Steve? should eh I really sh- the problem the problem I'm having with the Red Dead Redemption videos is sort of what I'm having with the Harry Potter videos which I I have to get back to I have to upload stuff to my damn channel is. Harry Potter is so vast and Red Dead is so vast um, that I don't even know where to start. And I See, think- Okay, now I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to cut Steve off because I've already told him how to do this. Okay. But he, he said, no, can't. No, Here's I what forgot. you do. Here's what, what you do, How do Steve. I do? What do I do? Okay. Especially with Harry Potter, okay? Red Dead, you can do it mission by mission or thing by thing that you oh do. Oh my God. Right? That's so many missions. <laughs> Steve, what else are you doing, man? Stuff. I'm doing a lot for sports then, man. I'm just giving you shit. With Harry Potter, you do it chapter by chapter, you make the videos five minutes long. That's all I'm saying. The struggle is going to be keeping it to five minutes for me. Well, that's okay, but that's going to be fun. So you try to make it like it's like a, it's a Harry, HFR, HPFR, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you do every chapter. So the first one, The Boy Who Lived, boom. And you got you to gotta think about it in terms of like, here's what I want. Because I want to watch this, Steve. This is why I'm trying to get you to do this. I want to watch you talk about what it was like reading that first chapter and how confusing that first chapter is when you have no context. The first time you read the Harry Potter, that first chapter with Dumbledore and Hagrid and all these people and, and McGonagall and everybody else, you're like, what the fuck is going on here? I don't understand. And, it's, and, then, and then it slowly reveals itself and over the course of many books and it's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited to see it. You need to do it. You need to do it. There's a few like golden stretches of Harry Potter that I can listen to over and over and over and over and over again, because they're so good. 
uh obviously in the deathly hollows there's the uh like everything surrounding the battle at hogwarts Mm -hmm. and basically towards the end of the book um the final seven or eight chapters of the goblet of fire are absolutely unbelievable and just the beginning of the book when harry finds out I listen, I've been listening to that again. It's, I can just listen to it over and over and over again. It's so magical. For Red Dead, um, what, what, I think what I'll start with is, so it's the prequel to Red Dead Redemption. Right. But I didn't play it. I don't know anything about it other than I had heard the name John Marsden. That's it. So Red Dead Redemption, which is the prequel, and it comes first chronologically, that's my introduction to the game. And to me, if that's the end of the game, at the end of it, I, I could die happy. Finding out what happens in the actual Red Dead Redemption, I'm like, what? Yeah. No! <laughs> but um, yeah, I want to talk about playing Red Dead Redemption 2 for the first time, having no frame of reference for Red, the Red Dead Redemption canon mm-hmm. and what that's like and how awesome it is. And like, and when are you gonna do this? I could do it. I'm I'll do it whenever I damn want to. What do you? What are you, what are you gonna? What you, what's your like? You? I want your YouTube thumbnail to be great. You have to. <laughs> you have to have a great title. His name's Arthur. <laughs> like I'll try to. I'll, I'll have like a fake shotgun. I'll, I'll, I'll take Arthur's face and and just put my face. <laughs> no, it needs to be, but it all, the title also needs to be a lie about the game. Yes, like, yeah. Arthur's a leaf oh. thing? How, oh. to, how to time travel in the game? And Dutch you're... is in D-Day? <laughs> <laughs> John Marsden voted for Biden. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just start putting all these... Here's John Marsden and Tesla. the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> Kim Kardashian? <laughs> just all these things. Takashi? Takashi's in Red Dead? There's nothing I want more than those Harry Potter and those Red Dead Redemption videos with you doing them. I like, Mm -hmm. I I like just hearing your reaction to shit because it's just, it's great. So we need, we need some of that. I need something. I need a fix. I I did a whole, I did an Instagram live with someone where I just had to name as many Harry Potter characters as I could in, (sighs) I think it was 10 minutes. And I got an astonishing Staggering amount of names. <laughs> really? Oh my god! It was crazy it was to old. think when we started this show, you hadn't even heard it or what? Hadn't or read even it. heard it, and you're and like, I, had, I don't think I will. I had like 150 names. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Let's go book by book. Are you guys ready uh, for our last bit of the podcast? Sure. Ready. All right. So the internet is scary. 44. Uh, <laughs> wrote on yeah. Reddit uh, that they have some trivia for us to answer. So it'll be Steve Dangle versus Adam Mm Wilde on did this player score 10 goals or more for the Leafs? That's the game we're playing. Okay. Mm. I'm going to give you a name and you have to Mm -hmm. tell me whether they scored 10 goals or more or less. Whatever one you want to do it by. Okay. First name, Daniel Winnick. Did he score 10 or more goals? Yes. Man, he played for the Leafs for so long though. Is it for the Leafs? Yes. For the Leafs, yes. yes. I say he did. Adam says yes. Steve says yes. The answer is he scored 11 goals. Yeah. In you know what was funny? Games. When he re-signed here that he had been traded and then re-signed that summer and was on that first Babcock team and then was like, when they traded him at the deadline, acted surprised, was like, oh, I just didn't think they'd trade me. Like, what? What? <laughs> No, they milked the Daniel Winnick and Roman Polak house until they ran out of picks. Yes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. They Next traded up. both of them twice. Next up, Ron Hainsey. No. No. Ding, ding, ding. Both of you uh-huh. are correct again. Shocking. Ron Hainsey scored nine goals. Oh. Okay. In 161 games. Okay. Next he up. played a lot of games at the least. He did. Man. Holy. Yeah. Okay. Colby Armstrong. Yes, he did. Oh, wait, he only had no, he had nine, didn't no, he? No, he had nine. Correct nine. again. Nine goals as a leaf. Why did I know that? Nine games. Why do you, you know, know that? that? Because That's a Steve thing. Steve no, but that. I chirped him for it because he was, uh, he was giving me, you know what it was on ice surfing, which you watched one morning, Adam. Um, he, uh, <laughs> Every morning. 
he was chirping me for my skating and I go, wow, that's the kind of advice you get from someone who scored nine career goals for the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Oh, he just laughed. Oh, good. He he's knows it was a funny, dude. Oh yeah. He's, he's, he's just the best. I wish I had his energy at all. Well, he's got like, doesn't he have like four, four kids too? Yeah. And he tires them all out. They're like, dad, leave us alone. Like, wow. He's unreal. You got to have energy, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Next up. Carlo Koliakovo. Did he score for a surprisingly 10 goals as a Toronto Maple Leafs player? He played 111 games. No. Mm -mm. Steve? I say he did. And Steve takes the lead. Whoa! That's a Oh, I got it? 12 goals. Oh! Wow. Okay. Damn. 10%. All right. No? Next up. He wasn't bad, man. He didn't, oh, no, he, he was. He was good. He was, I think injury getting hurt. Them. Yeah. yeah. Jamal Mayers. Ooh. That's a dark era. Uh, a really, really bad era. Yeah. I that, was the, he... that was the Nicholas Hagman era. That was the Ian White's going to be captain era. I liked Jamal Mayers, and I liked Wayne Primo. That's where we were at. Because he was always, like, hard-nosed and a tough SOB. I don't think he did. Who'd you like more, Wayne Primo or Anton Strauman? And on Strowman. One was traded for the other. Uh, um, I say no. Adam, what did you say? I'm going to say he did not either. You are both correct. Nine goals for Jamal mm. Mayers. You know who I weirdly I liked as a Leaf is I really liked Nicholas Hagman. I don't know why. Yeah, just a big Nicholas Hagman guy. I was like, man, this Hagman he, sure kills penalties. I'm pretty sure. Didn't he score a hat trick in the Leafs' first win of the 07 and fun year? No, did he? Yeah, I think it was against See? Anaheim. Should have bought the jersey. Legend. Absolutely. <laughs> Next up, we have Tom Fitzgerald. Oh, I loved Fitzy. I love Fitzy on the Leafs. Did Tom Fitzgerald score more than 10 goals as a Toronto Maple Leafs player? Also, isn't he a former Panthers captain? Did he? Was he not the captain of the Panthers? You might be right. I think he was. I think he was. Um, important question. Does this Adam, include... Your, does this include playoff goals? No. Before you look that up, Adam. Oh, I wasn't looking it up. I was looking to see if he was the captain. <laughs> Were you the captain? The I got Google Images open. I wasn't looking up Hockey TV. Uh, no, I don't think he did. He was like the defensive guy. How many games? 135. Oh, maybe. Uh, I'm going to go no. Going no. By the way, he was the Predators captain. Predators. No. You're both saying no? Yeah. The answer is yes. Damn! Oh, Tom Fitzgerald no. scored 11 goals. Oh, oh the worst. <laughs> no. Man, they are cutting this as close to the line oh, as you can. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. that you guys know this stuff. Oh, I got one for you. All right, I'm ready. Active Leaf. Par Lindholm. No. 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 He had, he had two. You're both saying no? Yeah, no, he didn't. You are correct. Yeah, <laughs> I remember because he wasn't good. <laughs> no, he's fine. He was, he was a guy. All right, give me. He one had second. some ridiculous. He was the last player in the NHL this year. I'm pretty sure who was on like an opening night roster to be on the ice for a goal against at five on five. Something ridiculous yes. like that. Because he is. Is he not Boston's uh, fourth line center? He's their like shutdown guy, and I'm pretty sure Babcock was like really upset when he was dealt. Yes. In retrospect, um, that deal didn't need to happen, but whatever. What was that for? Oh, that was Patan, right? Patan. And, that, oh, and yeah. since Pierre Lindholm left, they haven't had a natural center on the PK except for uh, Goat. Do you, think the, do you think that last year in the playoffs, Babs was just playing Hyman there just to say, can't do Nick Patan there, could have had Pierre yep. Lindholm? Yep. Here's the guy with one knee who's a winger. All right, have fun. Um, another active player. Against Matthew. Bergeron, have fun. Matthew Martin. Did Matthew Martin score 10 goals or more? Because he played, Toronto, he must have played 130 games, 130 130 games. 132. Almost on go. the dot there, Adam. Because he just, because they, like, he played every game and then Mike Babcock's like, okay, you're not playing anymore. Mm -hmm. Like there was like, it was like in a January. Um, I say no. I am going to say, this is a risk. I'm going to hate myself for this. I'm, gonna, I'm going against my gut and I'm going to say yes. 
The answer is no. Ah, damn eight it. Goals. Eight goals. How many? Goals. Eight. Yes. But so many cool handshakes. Did he ask how many handshakes he had with <laughs> Mitch Marner? He had he had at least one, I think it was a three or four point game when he uh when Marner was on his wing. Remember that? Or Marner was on his other wing. <laughs> yeah, yep, I do. Him, Marner, and I don't even remember who. All right, we'll do uh two more. Okay. okay. Tim Brent. Yes. Did Tim yes. Brent score ten goals or more yes. as a Toronto Maple Leaf? The answer yeah, is no. Really? What? Yes, he only scored eight goals in 80 games. Oh, he wow. scored some really good ones, though, out of those eight. They were heroic. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. The Tim Brand highlight reel is pretty good. The Tim Brand highlight reel is almost exclusively against Carolina. It's weird. Wow. I'd like, I'd like to know who those goals were against. You know, you know why I know this? So we had to do, like, a plays of the year bracket mm-hmm. when I was at Leafs TV, and they finished second last. And I'm pretty sure our finals was like a Nazem Kadri shootout goal versus a Jonas Gustafson preseason save. It was a tough year. But Tim Brent had at least two goals in there, plus blocking a shot with his nuts. <laughs> Talking about dark year. timelines. Just fucking it was tough, man. Can you imagine we went into those years with hope too? Like, how? Oh. Like, what the fuck? Like, it was either the 08 09. Or 9-10? Or was it 10-11? It was one of those awful, awful years. No, it wasn't 8 9 10 10-11 or whatever. Great time to launch a YouTube channel. It certainly was. Next up is Matt Fratton. Frat Sanity, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He had like a game, or he had a run where he scored like nine goals in 13 games or something. Yes, absolutely he did. Only 91 games as a Leaf. Yeah. And then they traded him. They traded away Frat Sanity. I think he did. Yeah. The answer is yes. Scored 15 goals as a Leaf. Oh. Yes. It's the highest goal scorer on this list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Unless you guys do one more. Yeah, we do one more. One more. One more. Um, how about this one? Tyler Ennis in 51 games. Ooh. And he had a hat trick against mm-hmm. the Flames. Mm-hmm. No. No. Adam said no as well. The answer is yes. Oh! Tyler Ennis had 12 goals and six. Oh! That's pretty good, man. I thought he had nine. Uh, it's a shame. Wow. How many does he have this year? I want to know how he's doing with the Sens. I'm looking that up. Tyler Ennis. Oh, you're on it? Okay. Tyler. So I think Steve Ennis. won that, uh, what, two nothing? Yeah. That's guys. okay. That's okay. He had. Oh. oh, he got traded to Edmonton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he had 33 points in Ottawa in 61 games and has four points in Edmonton as well. So not bad. That's going to be another fascinating thing about when hockey comes back. You're going to see teams ice players where you're like, I, what? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Edmonton was looking pretty formidable oh, after yeah. the deadline with uh, Ennis and Athanasiu. What's Kovalchuk, what's the, what are the Kovalchuk Capitals going to look like? gonna look like Kovalchuk with the Capitals I guess I guess are they gonna like line up Ovi on one side and Kovalchuk on the other and just drop bombs is that is that how it's gonna happen like the only thing is that can make it... that more more perfect is if you put Milan Lucic in front of the net and just say stay here I would think I would think Carlson John Carlson plays their point and Kovalchuk maybe plays the other maybe. and then you have Ovechkin in the Ovechkin spot Backstrom doing Backstrom things, and then I forget who else is. Oh, and then where do you put Kuzi? Well, do you don't caps, need a second unit. Do, I was <laughs> like, going to say, do the Caps need a second unit? No. Ovi usually plays the full two minutes. He just stands there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Why not? Works for him. And when, and when they don't give him the Ovi thing, they go, okay, I'll switch with Carlson and make them – oh, I'm getting a phone call. Jesus. Oh. Stop it. Oh. Oh. Sorry. You were, and um, we, were so we with Carlson, and then you know, finish your basically they just make <laughs> they just make the team forget Ovechkin exists, and then they do the same play except it's Carlson taking the shot, and then they score, mm-hmm. and the Leafs go ah. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could have foreseen this. Ah, <laughs> That's no. the best part about watching ah. the Caps is like you know what's coming, and it's going to happen anyway. You've known what's coming for fifteen years, yeah, and it yeah. still goes in. Yep, fifteen years. Yep, mm-hmm. it's a good time. Hey. Well, listen, thank you so much for listening. We will be back on Tuesday uh, this week uh, because I'm in the middle of a move. So Wednesday is my big move day. Uh, And then Sunday is my daughter's birthday. 
So um, we are going to move the podcast to next Monday, and then you'll have it Monday, Wednesday next week. So it's again, it's today, Tuesday, and then Monday next week, or sorry, Monday the following week, and then and then back to our regular schedule, schedule Wednesdays and Thursdays, or Wednesdays and Sundays. Cool. So get ready for them to announce the season is coming back Tuesday night. <sighs> wait oh my god <laughs> it's it's got to be the way it happens it's got to be the way it happens thank you so much for listening and uh we will see you on tuesday the steve dangle podcast follow the guys on twitter at steve underscore dangle at adam w-y-l-d-e and at jesse blake Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.